Hello and welcome to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barkley Street, hashtag Barkley Street for all the cool kids out there. Episode 16, which is quite, Dang, quite sweet 16. staggering, really. Been, a, uh, been a, a pretty strange old 16 weeks and another, another mm. big week in the footy landscape this week. Uh, nice to be winners, though, and the skipper mm. of that winning Bulldog team, Marcus the Bond, the Stallion, joining me from Queensland Hub. How are you, man? Bobo, great to be, be with you and chatting again. Going going well, mate. Going okay. Clearly, like you mentioned, um, a bounce back and a, a win. Um, the other night was, was great on a Friday night, um, but always, you know, our thoughts are always with everyone back home in, in, in Victoria and especially in Melbourne, in our heartland of, of Footscray and Barclay Street. So always thinking of, of you guys down there. So how are you going, mate? How's it been? Obviously, plenty happening. News today about, you know, the mandatory masks in, in, in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, how's everything going for you back home, mate? Uh, oh, things are okay for us, mate. Um, we consider ourselves pretty lucky here in the Murphy household, but it's, it's pretty grim, yeah. It's a, mm. it's a, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a heavy vibe around around town. Um, you know, there's some, the big numbers and mm. you sort of wait for that every day, really, of just yeah how, it, how it's uh, how it's tracking. So, um, yeah, everyone's trying to battle through, mate, and hope for the best, and you know, hopefully everyone's doing the right things to to look after one another to so we can get out of this lockdown phase but we're you know we, we're trying to just trying to get used to it you know we're, we're in for a little while so mm. trying to manage our own situation and uh, remote learning starts back up today in our house so just just yeah. behind the walls yeah just then got the three kids trying to get them all sorted so yeah it's got it's got its little challenges mate but we're okay mm. and i think we've maybe discussed it previously because it is our I guess in, in in a way, Albert, your sort of second bout of, of lockdown, like after, you know, when we first started the pod a little bit in, in lockdown, you're obviously going into a, a second sort of wind of it, which is, which isn't great. But like I said, we all need to, you know, especially try and do as best we can, but how, how, who, what sort of duties do you have then when it comes to the schooling duties? Have you managed to learn from your previous bout, maybe where you can improve and assess, oh, I might be able to improve in this area, maybe some math or history, um, where do you think you'll lend a hand maybe this time around? Well, Marcus, you know me well enough. But <laughs> let's just say this. Let's just, I'll put it this way. My <laughs> first my first crack at long division in the first <laughs> round of homeschooling <laughs> was so abysmal that <laughs> I was taken out of mathematical duties. Okay, okay. Except Le- that, like... The times tables, and I don't want to bang on about this too much, but when yeah. when I was a kid, that's pretty much all that was pummeled into us. Yeah. Learn to read, yeah. and then times tables just been drilled and drilled. Yeah. yeah. This generation, they got no idea times tables. Mm. 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 Three times oh. three will keep them there for fifteen minutes. Look at <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, carry the one and then the two and yeah <laughs> trying to use bod mass yeah for times yeah. tables <laughs> uh, what about you uh, mate so i understand up there it's uh you sort of you're out of today, mate. is that right today. so what, are, what does that mean practically can you get out and have a hit of golf yeah, can can do. There's a, a few blokes who've actually already who are already on the course. Um, some are off at a ridiculous six six thirty in the morning, which um, after two weeks of living on essentially a golf course and just listening to the sounds of blokes duff it off the first tee and then come up and play the ninth. I think a lot of blokes were, were pretty keen to get out there and do do the same. Whereas I thought, you know, I'll you know ease into the day a little bit, might head to the range. Um, blow the cobwebs out and play a little bit later this afternoon. Yeah. So the the thing, it, it, essentially our quarantine ends today. So we've done two weeks of, of quarantine, which I think we explained last time. We could only roam within the means of the, I guess, the compound or the, the McHugh Resort here. Um, yeah. And it's very similar to, you know, coming out of quarantine. The protocols are very similar to what we're under. Well, they're pretty much exactly the same. When we were back in Melbourne, 
when we were training at the same time. So there's certain things we, we can do in, in small sort of doses. Um, a lot of it's, you know, takeaway base. You can go places, but you've got to be sort of on the move. Like you can't really just set up camp anywhere. So it's important yeah. for everyone to realise we've got, you know, some freedoms, um, but we've still got to be responsible and, and adhering to the protocols we've been given. So there'll be, you know, blokes going for a, a takeaway coffee, going for a walk, heading to yeah. the beach for a swim, but you, you can't really sit down and, and just... Um, huddle in places yeah exactly you've got to sort of keep you know get your freedom and then and keep moving so once again very very gracious of the fact we can sort of do that understanding how much how tough you guys are doing it back home but um yeah it's nice to be able to do obviously a little bit more at this point who's the uh who's the most impressive golfer amongst the lot and, and what's your own form like yeah, there's probably a bunch. There's probably a couple that, that um, probably rotate at the top depending on, you know, their previous round and, and how the, the mental side of the game goes. You've got a couple of head cases that can, <laughs> that can go off the boil, um, which I'm probably a bit the same aren't as all, well. Aren't all but, amateur golfers head cases? Isn't that yeah, kind of yeah. part of that's the attraction fair. of it is. golf? That's in, that's in the kit bag. That's one of the clubs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so they're probably the top ones you've got. Tori Dixon's a very good golfer. Maddie Suckling, the lamb, she hits the ball very well. Taylor Jaray, Bailey Dale. Um, Bailey oh, Dale and Tori, they're, they're two of those, like, just... Very good hand can pick, up, can pick yeah. up any kind of sport, can't they? Yeah, and as I understand it, Rowan Smith, very, very good too yeah. with that. Let very me. good with the willow. Yeah, very good with the willow. Hits, hits the ball well. Um, from a club perspective and obviously he was a very talented footballer so he's probably you know I haven't seen him play I've just heard rumours you know in the rumours of people oh he was he was good like those are the things that circulate at times throughout football clubs of you know journeys yeah. outside of football and and Rowan Bubba as we affectionately know him um, is definitely one of those so I, I will be pretty woeful I'm tipping later today um, but I've got my fingers crossed that I can at least middle one <laughs> Jason Tut is the worst golfer I've ever seen at the Bulldogs. Really? And, um, yeah. Ma- Matthew Croft, he, uh, for, you know, you know, Crofty, big, tough mm. man, like a real man's yep. man. Mm. The most dainty swing. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, delicate. <laughs> yeah, very del- delicate would be a really nice way of right. real, real just dainty. To caress, just tried to yep. caress it. Did he a bit too much? Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's so, good, man. Hey, is there a? Have you guys been just to pass the time? Have you had a FIFA tournament going on on the? Uh, has been. Did you catch? Did you catch wind of that? Yeah, yeah. yeah I PlayStation. Got spies, mate. I got a few spies up there. You do. No, well done. They're doing a good job. We did. Um, Jordan Sweet, um, one of the young blokes up here, put on a basically a FIFA a FIFA tournament for the. For the boys, which has sort of been going on over about five or six days. Um, so it obviously started as a pretty big of about, oh, I think there was about 20 odd, maybe 26 odd sort of players. And uh, I was out in the first round, mind you. I was pretty much in to make up the numbers and um, Italy, great, good. great selflessness. Italy. Great selflessness. No, oh, well, there was a couple of things, I'll be honest. I don't like making excuses, but uh, I'm going to anyway. Um, I was given a pretty poorly ranked team in a game I never really play, and I managed so how, to come you, up against. <laughs> how do you get your team? How does that work? You, is it random? Oh, so I was drawn randomly. Yeah, it was a random draw. It was probably the top twenty six teams or something were in each different sort of league. Like you've got, you know, your EPL, um, oh, you know, you've right. got your Italian, Spanish leagues. So yeah. no, it should have really been, you know, if I'm, you know, going to be critical of the um, organisers, the event organisers, <laughs> it should have should have been weighted towards skill level. Like, you know, if you're no oh, good, you should have had yeah. a better team. But I, I'm useless anyway. So no, Barcelona wouldn't have helped me sort of get any further than the first round. So I got done and I was spectating for most of it. But um, our, our good mate, Jack McRae, came out on top. I was about to say, Jack... Jack's like very impressive, super he's impressive. Too he had, good though. So like, he had Ever- he had Everton, which are a pretty mediocre sort of EPL team, as I as I understand it, and managed to churn through some of the best teams in the world like like it was nothing. So testament right. to him. Um, means he spent a lot of time on the game, which may too mean much. that he's lost out in other in other areas of his life. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, he he's good at FIFA, so it was an, it was great. Little things like that have made the 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 time up here sort of, you know, enjoyable at different times too. So, um, yeah. yeah, it was, it was definitely an interesting little, um, yeah, ongoings. 
Now, because of all the um, the drama of last week, we missed our we missed our pod last week. Mm. How do you reflect on the uh, on the last two weeks? A disappointing result against the Blue Baggers, yep. where they kind of sliced us open a, a fair bit, yeah. and put a fair bit of scoreboard on, and then uh, and then the um, the return against the Bombers, which I'm sure you would have been thrilled with. Yeah, they were um, very, um, I mean, opposites almost when you consider probably the way the game started. They, they got the jump on us. And in these sort of shorter games, starting well is sort of pretty, it's super important um, because obviously there's not as much time to, to probably catch up. But momentum swings are a real, a real challenge to stop in these shorter games. So we gave them, or well, they started well. We probably didn't, you know, do enough to, to um, stop their momentum in that sort of first quarter. Um, but that, that was they were, they were really good. They were super impressive with their pressure around the ball. Um, they obviously went forward and were pretty damaging. Whereas we still managed to create enough opportunities in that game, but just couldn't. We squandered too many and, and couldn't quite make enough of them. So that couple of goal gap, which was probably two goals, we just couldn't bridge. Um, and then they obviously ran away with it in the end, which you never never like to see. So we're pretty dirty on ourselves for letting them you know, be able to kick sort of six goals or so in the last quarter and make it look like a, a pretty ugly game. Um, so we, we, we quickly assessed what key things would, would help us be back in the game and probably get us starting the game and play our game better. Um, was, it, and that's was, how it we, more, was it a bit of a structure breakdown? Uh, oh, not probably. Somewhat structurally, we maybe got it wrong at times, um, but a lot of it, we felt like, you know, we contributed to ourselves. We had a lot of inside 50 still. We still had a lot of opportunities to to score and just probably didn't get enough across all three lines. Like, I think, yeah, the midfield battled sort of quite enough. enough. There was enough there for us to be in the game. Um, and clearly, we were probably two goals down at one point in the game, um, but just couldn't make enough of our opportunities going forward. Um, so that, that sort of hurts you when you, you go three or four inside 50s in a row, repeat entries, and then it was that typical, they just got out and then transitioned the ball all the way down and tapped it in in the goal square. Um, and trying to get back on back onto your medal after that was a bit of a challenge for us. So I think what you understand in this shortened season, Bob, is that um, sometimes you can have those slip-ups, but a lot of it will depend on, on how quickly you can get back to your best and how short you can make those little lulls. And um, yeah. yeah, thankfully we managed to get back to, to our best a little bit on the weekend and, and clearly get beat the Bombers. Can I ask you about a couple of your teammates? Because it, yeah, it was a pretty impressive win against the Bombers. In the end, it was a um, emphatic win. Uh, the first gamer, Cody Waitman. Oof. Couldn't ask for a better start to your career, could you? Bit of a hang in the pocket yep. and a banana from 40 out. Yeah. We were joking a little bit after the game because I had presented as a little sort of lateral 15, 20 metre, you know, opportunity if he wanted to, to find it. And credit to the kid, he ignored me um, and went back and check-sided his first goal with his first kick of his AFL career. So um, there's, there's certain players that, um, you know, sometimes they come in, they can surprise you with with their impact in a game. And sometimes there's, there's ones that don't because you're just, you're so understanding of their natural ability. Um, and particularly yeah, so small forwards. I, I wasn't shocked. He's a skillful player. Um, I was pumped because he, you know, kicked one of the best first goals I've probably ever seen and witnessed. Um, but I was a little bit unsurprised at how well he was able to just slot in at the level and his crafty yeah. little, um, obviously, footy footy know how, especially as a small yeah. forward, was was super impressive. So um, he, he started, you know, his career in a really good, really good state, um, and yeah, really impressive young kid too. Looks like he brings a fair bit of energy to the group. And yeah, the yeah, he does. He does. Um, he's a little, you know, he's so um, grateful for everything. You know, being a footballer, being able to do what what we do for for a living, um, and just love—he genuinely just loves being at a football club and around the environment, and clearly playing, albeit under different circumstances to what you'd probably normally play at your first game. He was still super, you know, excited and as happy as anything just to be out there. So that's what you love—you love seeing yeah. blokes who just love mm-hmm. playing and love being out there, and it gives us confidence. a lot of energy. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, well, it came yeah. through. It was, it was pretty exciting for for Bulldogs supporters to sit back and watch a um, mm. lot been spoken about uh, Timmy English who 
he's good this year. He's been incredible, and he's had he's had a couple of a uh, couple of weeks where he's been beaten. I think you know Pitney or Pitnet got the better of him the week before, or um, but on the weekend he was. He was incredible. It's like we know that Timmy's got all the pieces. You know, he can pick mm. the ball up off his toes. Um, when he's competitive, yeah. he's, he can tackle. Um, yep. He can mark the ball yep. in defence and attack and kick goals. Yep. He's field kicking. Yep. He's got all the pieces. Yeah, I just felt like the, the game on the on the weekend was he put it all he put all the pieces together. Is that how yep. you saw it? Yeah, I do. And and he got us going really with his first sort of ruck contest. Um, and you know physicality inside and his ability at ground level you're right like I think we've seen for a number of years now that it's sort of coming together sort of slowly and um, he's been sort of constantly working on um, his own individual um, game for, for a number of years he's working really closely with Stephen King who's our you know a really well renowned ruck coach and is our mids coach um, so he's working really closely with him and I think each game you obviously get an opportunity to learn from and particularly in this season he's probably had a couple that he'd he'd prefer to probably have back or, or, you know, took a few things away where he's played well in certain you know phases in the yeah. transition side of the game with the marking and, and ball use kind and, and just probably hasn't got the ruck stuff as well as he would have liked. So I think on the weekend, we probably saw that complete game from him where his influence in the ruck um, was pretty much matched by his ability to get the yeah. ball and, and take marks and just put it, together and, and the challenge now for, for him and us is, is to do that sort of every week and him understanding of how much influence he can have in so many facets is, is a really big weapon for us so no he, he, he's really trending obviously in the right direction but great for his own his own growth to experience that on the weekend it would have been nice to get him on the pod today but i believe he put a uh, a tea time for on the golf course ahead of us so mm. happy to We'll have to try yeah. another way. Refresher? Yeah. Refresher? Yeah. You reckon he needs a bit of a yeah. refresher? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll just keep his feet on the ground, the big fella. Yeah. Um, can I ask you, I might get, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get this footage to overlay uh, mm. in, in the edit room, Seamus. Yes. Um, but can I, a lot, of, a lot of us watching at home got very, very excited when centre, centre square bounce, Timmy goes up, and gives the royal wave, hit out, curls it back. I did see that. Very good pick up by you. I saw that on the gram. I was like, <laughs> oh, well, very effective. Yeah. Streaming through on his right right foot is the skipper yourself. Lace out. Mm. Right foot. Matty Suckling. Yeah, I mean, it was, the, it was the, it's the most sort of, <laughs> yeah, it's the most perfect sort of centre square bounce play you can get. But, yeah. So going before the centre square bounce, before the umpire throws it up, yes. That what was the chat? What was the conversation? Yeah, well, for you know everyone listening at home or in their cars or wherever you, you might be, we get to pretty much every centre bounce and have a basically conversation about how we feel things are going in terms of especially around the ground, but obviously in the centre bounce and um, there's different things that we do inside and how we set up in order to obviously get an advantage or or um, obviously help win the, the centre bounce. And um, Timmy's got a, a very good ability, obviously, of, of, he's quite long. When he gets up, he can get his hand to the ball quite well. Um, so on this occasion, we just basically um, teed up to hit the ball on the offside, um, which obviously, as you said, the Royal Wave means typically you're hitting the ball probably straight straight or, or across. Um, and he's sort of said, oh, well, why don't we try hitting it to the offside and then try and catch um, the Dons off guard a little bit. Um, yeah. And when he sort of got that confidence to say, you know, I think I can I can get it to that side, you're just, back, you're just backing in. Um, and so obviously we were anticipating him to hit the ball there um, and, and sure enough, it, it came off. So, um, you know, they're, they're the exciting things, is you, especially as a midfielder, when you start to see the confidence in, in a young ruckman come out like that, you do sort of just get, um, you know, your smile grows a little bit and you just feel, um, you know, more and more confident as you go to, to, to those situations. Um, so, yeah, like you said, he's given us the royal wave and um, fortunately I managed to, to yeah, lace, lace suckers out. And he's the, the good thing is the, the play got finished off. You kick it to someone who's a good 50-metre sort of outside 50 specialist and just, um, you know, send it home. All right, well, now I'm going to put, put you under the heat now. You've got to rank the three in order of what was the best, what was second, what was third. The hit, 
your opposite foot lace out path <laughs> or, the, or the suckling goal from 50? What what are the what's the ranking? Uh, well, the hit has to be number one, I think, because it doesn't happen without the hit. Um, and the goal probably doesn't happen without the kick. So, mate, so I think it's, it's easier said than done. Very it's nice. the hit, it's the kick, it's the goal. So, okay. in that Very order, good. probably. Oh, okay. yeah. That's me. That's as, uh, <laughs> that's um, as good. All right, mate. Well, it was very nice. It was, it was beautiful to watch <laughs> yeah. on, a, on, a, uh, on a red letter night for the dogs. Hey, let's take a quick break. And after that, we'll uh, bring in none other than Josh Dunkley. Welcome back to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barkley Street. Of course, brought to you by our great friends, Mercedes-Benz Vans. I forgot to mention Mercedes-Benz Vans at the start of the show, so I'll give myself a bit of a, a bit of a click for that. Marcus, you should have reminded me about yeah, that. Yeah, always in our hearts. Always in our hearts, the Benz That's family. True. Always on our mind, as uh, exactly. Elvis and Willie Nelson sang all those there years ago. Uh, it's our great pleasure today, though, to welcome a man who I'm imagining he's not a big fan of Willie Nelson. He's a bit too sort of... Too modern for that. A bit too slick. Might be a bit too <laughs> handsome for this podcast too. Josh Dunkley, welcome to the pod, Josh. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, Bont, for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, danke. Now, uh, I, I just want to get straight into the uh, the heavy topics, the the real oh, stuff. We'll get geez. to well, we'll, we'll get to no, the football, up. and we'll get no, to Josh's. Up. We'll get to Josh's <laughs> injury soon. Oh, sorry, uh, Marcus, Joe, I might not have prepared definitely... you for this, Josh. <laughs> Marcus, you definitely need a haircut. Dunks, no, you're starting you to look a bit fluffy as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And my... hey, I've always had a bad haircut, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> my spies tell me that there's been a bit of uh, in-house uh, barber work, barber shop stuff being happening in the uh, in Oof. the hub. Is that is that true? Oof. Who's the who's the barber? Oh, Toby McLean's been having a crack. I'm fairly sure. But the other day there was actually a been bit of a um, good crack. <laughs> bit of a photo shoot too. Did you see Doc Duray on the on the Clippers with Matty Suckling with Kappa on the camera as well? So very interesting yep. setup there. What's the go with the the just crude? Oh, like... mate, mate. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't have seen. But the young kid Latham Vandermeer, he's had a he's had two yeah, in a week. I, I reckon. Saw... He's had I saw two in a week. Like... I was like, oh, no. <laughs> just what a tidy is... up. Just a tidy up to go to zero. He went zero, I think, on the side, the young the young boy. So I reckon uh, maybe easily influenced when you're in the when you're in the hub and all the boys are around, there seems to be a bit of a a bit of a push to who can have the worst haircut, I reckon, who can look the silliest at times. Um but there's a few, there's a few it, suspects. Oof, oof. Sammy Sammy uh, Lloyd's got a good one. Um, Zane corey has got a good one. Zane Corey, yeah. yes, Zane's got a he's, nice one. He's showed up very nicely on the camera on Friday night. <laughs> yeah, some just get lucky, I reckon. They just go, oh, maybe we'll try the two today, or we'll try the one, or maybe we'll go zero, and then it somehow walks. They walk out and it looks reasonable, but um, yeah, there's a couple of shockers. <laughs> it seems to be kind of the thing doing the rounds in the whole comp. I suppose is this is this one of the effects of hub life of the boredom of hub life that blokes are just giving themselves crude haircuts probably more quarantine i reckon bobby when you can't get out and actually get a proper one <laughs> yeah okay yeah hey dungs how's the injury what's the uh, what's the update there what are you up to on the rehab train yeah it's going pretty well mate i've ticked a few boxes a lot in the last week or so um got out of the moon boot pretty quickly which was sort of restricted me a lot so got running on tuesday last week for the first time couldn't find an alter G. That's a whole another like another story because uh, obviously in quarantine up here, so um, the alter Gs weren't accessible, which is a bit of a pain. But went what's straight the out, alter, out of the what's grass. The, what's the uh, what's the alter G? Just for those who aren't um, across that. Yeah, so the alter G it just takes some body weight off, so you can run at eighty percent body weight, seventy percent body weight. So when you're coming back from injury, it's important to sort of progress through those stages and. Um, yeah, unfortunately, as I mentioned, we couldn't get our hands on one last week. So I had to go straight to grass, which was, you know, didn't really hold me back, mate. You know, you know what the go is. It'll make you stronger, yeah. mate. It'll make you stronger. Straight in, bang. You'll be... Was it all right? Yeah, the, was it uncomfortable? Was it painful or you, or you okay? Yeah, I think you've got to expect a little bit of 
you know, pain through the back of the joint with this sort of injury um, initially because all the blood and stuff sits in there from the initial injury itself. So a little bit early, but then I, you know, warmed up and over the last week or so I've been pretty good pulling up well. So hopefully progress, progress from there. Yeah, yeah, he has been because the, the, not the comforting thing, but there's a couple, we've got a couple of syndesmosis injuries. So um, Joshy was, was probably the first, I think, um, of the couple, we obviously had Naughty and, and Jongy probably since. Um, so that I guess that that maybe comforting is the right word. Thing is that you're sort of going through. There's a couple that are going through the similar similar processes at the minute. So you must find that at somewhat Joshy pretty good to be able to sort of relate your rehab with the other two boys and then how they're coping. Have you found that's been been handy? Yeah, it has, mate. I've, you know, Naughty's actually camping next door to me, so we've been sort of leaning on each other. Um, yep. You know, I'm talking to him. He's asking me what I felt initially when when I started running because he started running as well a little bit now. So, yeah, a bit of bit of stuff through the back is probably the the main the main thing going on at the moment. But um, yeah, we'll we'll all help each other through it and hopefully be better on the other side. Can you two do me a favour? Can you ask the medical um, professionals at the football club? Mm. Is the syndesmosis is this a new injury or did we just call it something years ago? Like I'd never heard it's about not. it until five years ago. And now it's like, Oh yeah, no, it's not. Most, we, well, we've asked the same questions to be honest yeah. with you of how they've been. So particularly in this sort of, it seems like four week period since we've come back to, to playing, there's been a, there's been a high number of them. And clearly we've had a couple at the football club, but they have been across the league and, they're probably speaking to Chris Bell, who's our head head physio here. They're what they call a traumatic sort of injury, so it's not based on you know soft tissue, just part of the game, start or the opposite. They're sort of it's when you get caught under someone else, like it's a contact injury, but it's yeah what they call traumatic. It's a result of either landing, someone falling on your leg. So they're not quite uh, an injury of the you know the the rigors of the game. They're um, sort of contact injuries that happen as a result of people yeah get it your feet getting stuck under people is that right josh yeah. is that fair yeah it is it's sort of like a bit of impact through the force through the joint and then a twisting motion as well but then you look at someone like naughty's who's mm. was in the air yeah. when he had his he's toe just... pointed like mm. his was very unique so it's a yep. weird one but as you said i think it's a bit of bad luck at the time mm. yeah, it's really it's strange how, how prolific that that mm. injury is now uh, hey, Dunks, what do you do during games? What's your, do you, are you able to go and fill a role or what are you doing? I asked about it, mate. I try to do property, try to do everything to get to a game. But uh, I think this week we might get some lenience and be able to go along um, and watch them, watch on Thursday night, mm-hmm. which would be good. Yeah. It's are been you, good, uh, to have, yeah, it's been good to have some playing back in, in front of people and a bit of a crowd. And um, we played against two sort of big, Victorian teams in, in Carlton and Essendon, but um, we've seen some away sort of. We've played both of the games have been essentially our away games, so we've had some sort of support, and we have we do have a little bit of support up here in Queensland, particularly coming up from Mooloolaba at sort of training camps that we do every yeah. preseason. So it's funny the young kid Cody um, were couldn't believe the, the the noise of the crowd, even just after in front of about four and a half five thousand people, wow. and um, it's funny because you sort of go, well, wait until you know yeah, we, we get exactly. So we've had some, you know, we've been pretty lucky with some of the support we've had up here, but yeah, hopefully looking forward to a home game at some point too. Yeah, I can imagine. And Gold yeah. Coast this week, that's a that's going to be a it's a reasonable challenge now, isn't it? They're playing some good footy. The Suns got some exciting young kids. Yeah, they are. They're in. They're in very good nick. We're sort of watching a bit of their game the other night, um, and they're you know pretty strong physical team that can run as well. So um, they will. They present a bit of a challenge, but um, plus it's a it's a, obviously a Thursday night game, so it's a bit of a you know bit of a broadcast you know show sort of not stopper, but people will be watching. So it's it's big for once again. We love playing in those time slots, but but obviously a big game for for them too. So could be a good contest, I reckon. Hey, Dunks, can I ask you, so, you know, this year, you know, we know it's been dramatic and unusual and surreal and all of those words that have been um, trotted out many, many times. But last week's um, decision, you know, where the Victorian clubs had to get out 
and all you know all yeah. going to Queensland. That that was big big news in Melbourne, and uh, and sort of sent quite a few shockwaves. What? How were you guys told? I mean, I know you you're still saying staying in the same spot, but how were you told? And what was the sort of initial reaction of this stay is going to be you know for a, a much longer sort of period? How did that go down? Yeah, it was. Uh, you're talking about the like the last week's information, yeah. or you're talking yeah. about the initial? Yeah. Okay, yeah. last week. Yeah. So we um. I'm like an AFLPA delegate. So we had a, there was a players association meeting. I think it was Wednesday morning, Bont. And yeah, the boys actually had the main session. Yeah, spot on. So because I'm in rehab, I was, uh, I'd finished my bike session for the morning and just had touch. So I was on the call. Um, Doc was on the call as well because he's in rehab and Woody was actually out training. So they told us to the news then. Um, and then we sort of have to, that's part of our role. We have to tell the, playing group and feed back the information and then grab information off the playing group and then feed it back up to the PA. So yeah. part of the delegate role, as I mentioned, but yeah, that was the information we got provided with and shockwaves throughout the whole, whole camp because I think mm. the CEOs and granny and all those and the coaches were on the call as well on another call. So um, yeah, it was, it was hard. We had a meeting as soon as training finished back at the hotel and everyone was sort of yeah shocked initially, but I think uh, the boys and, the families up here at the moment have been really supportive of each other and you know, willing to do whatever we can for the game to keep going. So Gary Ablett, that was the that was the big news yesterday that he's he's left the hub to to be at home with his um with his you know young young family. Mm. Um, are there any of our boys in in circumstances where they might have to head home? There are, yeah, I think, yeah. Mm. There, there definitely are certain like every I think every person up here has to somewhat consider their own you know circumstances and how this obviously situation is going to affect affect not just them but but their families as a whole um, so I think all the way along from a, a player's perspective a leadership perspective and obviously from a whole football club perspective we've always said that that players um, have the option to, to do whatever they they need to in order to support their family so Clearly, we hope that we can keep everyone together and everyone that's up here in the hub. And we've got a number of families that are, that are already up here and, and are really hoping we can have more join us um, sort of in the, in, in the future um, to obviously make these places as, as, as comfortable, as safe and as, as um, supportive as possible. But, but players and staff alike all know that um, there's going to be circumstances where we're people may need to assess whether they need to head back home at different periods to help support their family. So I think the good thing is that, that everyone within the hub knows that. Um, so they feel completely supported to make the decisions that they need to in order to support their families. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, it's an incredible job that you guys are doing. So it's much appreciated from, uh, from your supporters, but I think general footy supporters as well, you know, it's certainly making life a lot, uh, a lot easier to bear down here in Melbourne in lockdown with, with footy on the weekend, but it's understand there's a lot of complexities around it and, you know, the, the issues with, you know, family and health and young children and all of those things yes. um, need to be taken into, into consideration. Um, Dungs, one last question from me, mate. Um, it's bitterly cold down here in Melbourne at the moment. I assume it's a bit warmer up there. Have you, uh, in your rehab training, have you even bothered to pack a singlet or T-shirt or has it just been... <laughs> Just been topless the whole way. Lightest bag, lightest bag on the trip. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you, they weighed them all. Lightest bag on the trip, I'm telling you. <laughs> no, you know what, Bobby? I was actually expecting this question at some point. Um, <laughs> I, we, we actually recruited in the off season, Josh Bruce, and he's he's actually helped me out a little bit. He's initiated the first top off, and then I'm, oh, I'm second. Wow. So oh, yeah. it's been a bit easier for me. <laughs> Bobby, you just that need that one you don't person get... through the wall. Man, you don't get the nickname awful. Ken. You don't get the nickname Ken Doll for no reason, and you know that. <laughs> well, Bobby's actually started that. I think the only one yeah. that calls me that now is Roz, Bob. So oh, she's oh, carrying on the legacy, mate. I reckon. You know why? A lot of somber people who are upset about how <laughs> the positivity of the nickname. <laughs> yeah, that's They're right. meant to go the other way. <laughs> Hey, uh, boys, thanks so much for giving us a, a little bit of your time. I know the golf course is calling you. You've been all cooped up for a little while and you need to get out and about and have a swim and 
Josh, if you're going to have a surf, enjoy that. Um, if you're going to play golf, I believe the golfing community is a bit more conservative. They will require you to wear a top. Yeah, I brought one polo, mate. One polo, that's it. Yeah. Sleeveless. It's sleeveless, though. <laughs> Just wear a sleeveless vest. Oh. Um, hey, good luck on Thursday. Um, all of us back here, uh, we're loving um, what you're doing out on the field, particularly uh, against the, the Bombers. We could take or leave the, the slop you served up against the Blues. Oh, um, I knew it was coming. You don't miss me, <laughs> Murphy. Hey, hey, I've got to represent... The people, and this is what the yeah. people want. They want okay. more of the bombers, less of the blue stuff. So, um, yep, uh, good luck against the Gold it's Coast. The it's going to be a uh, Dunks, it's gonna be a ripper. So, hopefully, Dunks, you get to go and watch the game, and uh, we'll see you, blokes, on the other side. Yep, Thanks, Bobber. Thank you. Take care, everyone.